Nigel Farage is on a visit to the levels here today. He joins me now, the UKIP leader. Very good to see you, Mr Farage. Good let's start with that point, then. Yeah. You're basically saying let's not spend, and it's a huge amount, isn't it? 0.7% of GDP. Let's not spend that money abroad. Spend it at home where it's needed most. Well, I think what's amazing is all the government have done in response to all of this is promise an extra 100 million sterling, uh, but that money is to be spent on upgrading rivers and those sort of things. Not a penny has been offered to any of the farmers or any of the people who are suffering grievously. Now, you know, we can't change the weather, but what the government could do for a tiny sum of money is they could say to people, you will suffer no financial loss as a result of this. And what a relief that would be and a weight off people's minds. But you'd like to see that come from the international aid budget. That's where the pot well, is. Well, it seems to me that the aid budget is about us giving charity overseas. When you've got an emergency in this country, it's time to say that charity begins at home. I mean, what are we doing giving £300 million a year to India, who've got a space programme, aircraft carriers, and they've even got planes on them? So there's a very strong argument that says, spend the money here. But there are disasters and disasters, if you know what I mean. This is a disaster as we see it in the United Kingdom. It's nothing like... Uh Typhoons, the well, okay. typhoon well, Haiyan well, well, and things that like may, that, is it? You know, well, where, that, that where thousands may, of people that die. That may well be true, but wouldn't it be a good gesture to see a British government saying, we're going to put our own struggling people first? Yes, this is the most extreme case, but don't forget, in Chertsey, there's horrible flooding there. There are parts of Kent still under very, very big flood alert, let alone the storm damage that's been done. We've got a railway to rebuild to Devon and Cornwall. We've got sea walls that need maintaining. Now, this is going to need more than the really paltry sum of money the government's offered is so far. Is this a fleshed-out policy, then? I mean, is this all the international aid budget gone? You'd stop it altogether, no, or just a proportion the, the, of it? And if so which proportion? The international aid budget is £11 billion pounds a year. So how much all of that the would you want to see All here? the government have offered so far is less than 1% of that, in the form of £100 million. Do you know, if suddenly that was 5% or 6%, you'd be talking real money. But is this, you know, the back of a beer mat calculation again. Is this another UK well, policy that's well, not thought out? Well, or is it, well he but, was a very how, good... But, I tell you but what. how much of the international aid budget would UKIP like you know, to see diverted you know, to the of UK? Of the 11 billion we spend in foreign aid, only 2 billion gets spent on genuine humanitarian projects. And uh, overall, I would like to see the foreign aid budget cut back radically. But short term, all we would need is a couple of weeks' money from the foreign aid budget to solve a lot of the financial problems mm. that are going to be caused by this. But there's this. an argument, isn't there, as well, that even if that money were diverted, and how much of it's still unclear from your point of view, if that money were diverted to the UK where it is spent, don't the entirety of the British people have to have a say while saying, well, you know, if we're going to spend 10, 20, 100 million on flood defences around the country, we have to be asked, would you rather have hospitals? Would you rather have schools? Do you think it should be spent in the Somerset well, levels? Do you think it well, should be spent well, elsewhere? The, of, of course. Government faces these difficulties every single day. What doesn't happen is we don't get the worst level of rain in a winter since 1760 and thousands of people suffering terrible damage to their homes. This is a one-off event, and for a relatively small sum of money, the government, government could also make itself very popular by doing it. Tell me what you've seen while you've been going around here, what your reception has been. What have you made of the reception that uh, the likes of Lord Smith from the Environment Agency has been getting? We saw Owen Patterson, the Environment yeah. Secretary, getting a bit of a rough time. What's well, your reception I think, been I think like? there is a feeling from people that uh, politicians and bureaucrats turn up for a photo op and then disappear. And I've made it absolutely clear from first thing this morning I'm here to meet people and I'm here to learn. And I've been looking at floodplain maps and, 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 and building proposals and I, I will leave here knowing a lot more about this situation. What really gets me is that last March and April there were local politicians going on television, including UKIP ones, saying that unless we change the management of these rivers there was going to be a problem this winter. And, 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 and I feel that the Environment Agency have failed completely. They seem to want to follow European directives to the letter of the law, uh, and really they should be putting the interests of farmers and householders before that of beetles and voles. Mm. But should they be putting town before country? Well, that, of course, again, we don't know exactly strategically what's happened here, but there does appear to be... There does appear to be, uh, you know, very large amounts of money spent, for example, on Exeter, you know, which is just, just down the road where their defences have been shored up and here they've stopped dredging. So, so these, are, these, again, are very difficult decisions and we're going to have to have a public inquiry after all this to find out how we're managing the rivers in this country.